Is the Spooksville TV series good? Yes, with a few caveats. First, a little backstory. I read a few of the books in grade school and watched the show on its original run in the, on the Hub Network. Remember that? I enjoyed the series then, and I enjoyed it more re-watching it for this review. I appreciate the series more after reading the books, despite the um, massive differences between it and its source material. Like any adaptation, this series does differ from the books, however the question becomes, do the changes negatively affect the show? I don't think they do, and this is coming from someone who loves the books. This is definitely not a Last Airbender or Artemis Fowl level disaster of an adaptation. Now, I do have some critiques, but I promise to keep them brief. Some of my favorite characters from the books are either completely absent or completely different. Best anime rival ever, Bryce Poole never shows up in the series, and the cute and courageous Cindy only appears in the total of one episode and contributes nothing to the plot. These two characters are just as important as the main trio in the books. And Anne, the beautiful, deadly, and wise antagonist slash mentor of the group, in this series is a teenager with ulterior motives that befriends the trio and acts as a love interest for the main character. Also, just as a side note, the show is very low budget, and it shows in several episodes, but put a pin in this because I'll come back to it in the positives. Okay, the ugliness is over. Time for the positives. The casting and acting are great on all fronts, particularly from the main trio of Adam, Sally, and Watch. Key and Johnson, Katie Douglas, and Nick Percha embody these characters to a T, and they are the reason I instantly fell in love with the show. Aside from great casting, and the writing staff are no slouches either, adapting several of the stories in a semi-faithful way and coming up with side stories that are completely their own. Back to my earlier point about the show's budget, while it is definitely on the lower side of the spectrum, especially the CGI, the practical effects, makeup, and occasional stunt work are impressive. And I do need to mention that this series ends on a cliffhanger that will probably never be resolved, so that might frustrate a new audience. But being totally fair, I wasn't a huge fan of how the books ended either. So I guess that was something that wasn't lost in an adaptation. This series continues to have a fan base to this day, and I completely understand why. I've seen a few petitions to renew the series for a second season, but it's been six years, and with the Hub Network being defunct, I don't see that happening anytime soon. So for the time being, I just say read the books, watch the series, and enjoy as much of Christopher Pike's work as you can. If they ever do another TV adaptation of the series, I have a few ideas that would appease both the book lovers and the first series' as fans. Spooks Hill fits into a genre shared by Gravity Falls, Stranger Things, and Scooby-Doo Mr. Incorporated, so I'd borrow a few ideas from how those shows were done. The Spooks Hill series is targeted at a preteen audience with its fun demeanor and dark themes. It could have similar tone and style to Gravity Falls and Mr. Incorporated. I would like to take it one step further and also implementing an overarching story like those two series which the first series did do pretty well. The aspect I would emulate from Stranger Things would be the time period the story takes place in. The 1980s aesthetic works wonders for Stranger Things' popularity, and setting the new Spooksville series in the late 90s, just like the books, would be a massive nostalgia trip for people my age, and could introduce the younger generations to an era they never got to experience. And I do think the first series illustrates that a new series should be an animated one to work around budgetary issues. This would allow any returning cast members from the original show to come back and voice the characters again, since they are now too mature to play them physically. My final and most important idea for the stories is to stick very close to the 24 books in the series and only add things to enhance the story, not stripping away any memorable characters from the books. The books are split up nicely into two parts, the first 12 being during summer vacation and the remaining 12 being set during the school year. We'll call them seasons one and two. One aspect I really admire about the first TV series is how they made Madeline Templeton as the overarching main antagonist which I think could easily be worked into a more direct adaptation of the books. 
I would do this in a similar way to Bill Cipher from Gravity Falls or the Evil Entity from Mystery Incorporated. And the final thing I would do is give the series a grander finale than Book 24 did. I wouldn't go too crazy with it, but make it feel like a finale that rewards the audience for sticking with the series all that time.